From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Rob Westgate. A new day is dawning without the immediate threat of wildfires for residents of Jasper, Alberta. Emergency officials say the blaze that chased away the town's population and left a third of its structures in charred ruin has now been listed as being held. An evacuation alert was in effect until yesterday's announcement. Residents who had been cleared to return to their homes after three weeks away were warned that they could be told to flee again at a moment's notice. A preventative boil water advisory for parts of Montreal has come to an end as city officials scramble to deal with a major water main break. Witnesses described it as a wall of water Friday when the pipe burst near the Jacques Cartier Bridge. The area flooded quickly, prompting firefighters to tell nearby residents to leave. The Red Cross was tasked with helping the flood victims, and luckily only three people needed emergency housing. A northern Manitoba First Nation has imposed a curfew for all residents following a spate of stabbings. The Opie Penopi Wind Cree Nation's curfew will remain in effect for the next few weeks. That's under the advice of the RCMP and the community nurse. The Mounties say they responded to multiple stabbing incidents early Saturday morning. One victim had to be transported to Thompson with non-life-threatening injuries, and at least one suspect is in custody. Another individual received treatment at the community nursing station for a stab wound to the hand. Now over to the East Coast, where police in Newfoundland and Labrador are appealing to the public for help locating a wanted 23-year-old man in relation to a handful of charges. The RCMP say Dolphin Scott Rich is charged with uttering threats to property, forcible confinement, and possession of materials designed to cause fires. A photo of Rich provided by the RCMP shows him with shoulder-length hair and wearing a printed black t-shirt. And for a look ahead, Statistics Canada is set to publish its July Consumer Price Index report on Tuesday, and forecasters expect it will show inflation slowed to 2.4% from 2.7%, in June. TD Director of Economics James Orlando is forecasting the annual inflation rate fell despite upward pressure from gasoline and food prices. Orlando says the annual rate will still edge lower because it's being compared to significant upward price movement from a year ago. The market slowdown in inflation this year has boosted confidence among economists and the Bank of Canada that price growth will continue to ease in the coming months, giving the central bank the green light to continue cutting its benchmark interest rate. If forecasters are correct and the central bank lowers its policy rate at every meeting this year, it could bring its key rate down to 3.75% by the end of 2024. The Bank of Canada is scheduled to hold its next rate announcement on September 4th. Nijud Amalisikni in Press, Ottawa. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, the Edmonton Elks have collected three straight wins for the first time in more than five years after handing the Hamilton Tiger Cats a 47-22 loss. Edmonton's interim head coach, Jarius Jackson, says after starting the season with seven losses, his players are beginning to believe in their ability to win games. In the MLB, the Toronto Blue Jays came up short against the Chicago Cubs, 3-2 the final there. Meantime, top-ranked Iga Svitek and Yannick Sinner are into the semifinals at the Cincinnati Open. Svitek will look to extend her win streak to 16 matches as she takes on third-ranked Arnia Sabalenka in women's singles play. On the men's side, Sinner will face number three Alexander Zverev, the lone remaining former champion in the draw. And finally, the King's Plate has been cancelled. Officials say the weather is the reason why. The first leg of the OLG Canadian Triple Crown is being rescheduled for next Friday. From the Canadian Press, I'm Rob Westgate. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the CanadianPressNews.ca.